Well, g'day, g'day, and welcome back again to what is almost the end of our Yuen Fu trip. Uh, you find me here actually winding my way through alleyways and marketplaces. I'm on my way to a big park uh, to, just to go and have a look at this place. Apparently it's very beautiful. Uh, so we're walking down there. It's another, it's another very, very hot day here today. But just on the way, I thought I'd have a little chat and uh, show you some of what we see on the way through here. So uh, let's turn this camera around here. So we've basically just come from the third floor of this building, which was uh, the ground floor a couple of hundred yards back. It's just uh, been dropping down. The ground has been dropping down away from it. I thought I was going to go straight through to another street, but that didn't happen. Uh, right, let's duck through this little alleyway and see what we've got here. So we were going to uh, go and try and find where the drones were taking off for the uh, celebrations tomorrow night but that uh, the company's facility is rather large I'm gonna go this way yeah we'll go this way we'll go just take a chance on where we're going and yeah it looks like the drones are launching from uh, in the middle of the facility somewhere so I couldn't couldn't get any access to them at this stage but we're going to, uh, and I couldn't even see where they might have been. They, uh, yeah, they're probably all packed up. They wouldn't want drones sitting out in this hot sun, so they'll all be covered up somewhere, left or right. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to go right. Uh, so one of the other little interesting thing that I thought I might just talk about a little bit is last night I was around with Jonah and Emily and their families having dinner and turns out Emily's English teacher was coming to visit uh, last night and I, I just presumed it was a uh, social visit or maybe because they had their English speaking friend there they'd invited her around just to meet or whatever and and uh so they sat and chatted for probably an hour and then when she left i sort of barely said two words to her but when uh she left i sort of asked why was she here you know i was gonna sort of make a joke on it what is emily being a bad student and not studying hard enough or misbehaving in class and uh <laughs> I never really got that far it was uh she was here sort of giving warnings uh which apparently all the teachers do during the school holidays maybe not every school holidays i'm not sure whether it's every school holidays but it was basically telling people about being safe you know with it being so hot make sure your kids have lots of water if you're going swimming make sure you're looking after them keeping an eye on them all that stuff make sure they've got the correct gear and they know what they're doing so it was a apparently if if a child dies here part of the response well maybe not responsibility is the wrong word but i'm not sure how to put it actually but for lack of a better term part of the responsibility might be dropped on the school for not having educated the children properly which is very different from what we have in australia where once your kids are out of school they're your responsibility it's uh yeah unless you can directly link something that the school has done to a child's problem uh it's not anything to do with the school so that was interesting just the uh different kind of attitude as we walk around here just on the left here we've got another little lake areas here so we're in another little sort of inner city community here 
we have a what is this that looks like a primary school i think yes i would say primary school it's not a kindergarten and it doesn't look big enough to be a middle school it's certainly not a high school uh, so yeah that was interesting i i really thought she was just here as a social visit but it turns out that part of the teachers duties during their summer vacation is to go and check on the welfare i guess of the students and make sure that uh everything's sort of being done correctly especially with this weather like it is it is atrociously hot has been for the whole time i've been here so yeah they uh definitely want to look after the kids so we're on our way to this park which is probably going to be one of the last videos i make uh we have the fireworks show tomorrow night which will be another video but that's about it and then we're looking at uh so it's monday today uh tomorrow night tuesday will be the fireworks and then uh wednesday we're looking at probably heading home back to jiaqing uh although that's still up for debate it depends on it depends a lot on what we can uh what else happens if i hear of something else happening here i might say oh well we'll stay another couple of days as happened in this case i was planning on actually going home today but then uh, over the weekend i heard about this fireworks show but okay we'll stick around a couple more days i'll oh, duck down here and uh check that out and i'm glad i did you know it's given me a chance to catch up with these uh musicians i saw met there from belarus that i met in the in the hotel in the hotel bar uh really really nice couple hope definitely hope to catch up with them again and yeah with any luck emily will catch up with them as well because uh yeah i was telling the telling the lady oh, what was her name i can't remember his name was alexis her name was oh no it's gone but uh yeah she was saying oh i was telling her about emily she's like, oh i'd love to meet her you know she speaks english she likes singing so i think they get on really well and you know personality wise i think they do all right so hopefully they'll catch up and maybe uh emily can get some more help learning english songs which would be great so we're going to stop yabbering and just uh just film stuff as we move around through this little area this is, and uh we'll wind our way down to this park it's about seven kilometers away the park so i've got quite a walk in front of me so i'm gonna shut up save my breath <laughs> and uh we'll talk more at the park and see what we can see there So another interesting little thing you're seeing more and more, I've had them in Jiaqing for maybe 18 months now, and these are the first time I've seen them here. So these actually, when you park your car, they'll read your number plate, your number plate's connected to your bank account, WeChat, whatever. I'm not sure what they're connected to, but basically that is how they uh, collect parking fees. So. It's not everywhere, it's mainly only in places that are very, very busy. So if you look in Jiaqing, it's areas around the shopping centre or uh, places like that. So we see down, down there in that corner, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, about 12 of them. And then the rest of the place is totally clear, it's totally free parking. So it's only those places that are really, really busy that they put them in and uh, yeah they're good much easier than the old way of having to find coins to put in a machine and all, all that sort of stuff so now nah, that's uh, the way the world's going 
So we're still on our way to this little park here, but uh, we found this little uh, little track here heading down into the bush. So thought we'd take a little wander down here, see what we can see. I don't know if we'll see anything, but uh, but we're under the shade and it's in the trees and it's nice and cool. So even if there's nothing down here, it's worth the trip. Whether or not. Uh, you find anything worth actually putting into a video for you guys I don't know but it doesn't look like the track goes oh maybe a little bit beyond here I can hear oh wow we've got an old old house down in here Okay, so we're not going to hang around in here. I can actually hear somebody working, so it might actually be private property. So let's not take that chance and risk upsetting people. So <laughs> we get back up onto the road here, carry on, and uh, get you to this park for a look. Get me to the park for a look. I haven't seen it myself yet, so it's meant to be very nice. So we'll see what it is when we get there. So we're still walking our way towards this park. We must be getting fairly close, I think. But uh, just sort of point these out. So we're out now in the countryside. There's you know, very little around us. Well and truly out of the city limits. And just on the side of the road, there's a second one of these little statues I've come across. Uh, this one's exactly the same as the last one I saw. I don't know who they're meant to be or what they're meant to signify, but yes, rather a surprise to find these statues just on the side of a busy highway. It's not like there's really anywhere for people to stop and have a look at them or anything. They're just, they're just hanging out. So we'll keep on wandering. And we'll be back to you when we get to the park up the road here. So, haven't managed to find this park yet, but uh, we've just pulled in here, the little covered area here to have a rest. I've walked a lot further than I thought it was going to work. I think we might have taken a wrong turn somewhere. But uh, just down here is a little river here, and a couple of, I don't know if they're water buffalo or something, but look like they're being driven down. There's a guy just standing up. I don't know if we can see him, he's up in the shade in there, yelling at the animals to come on, move in Chinese. At least that's what I think he's saying. So yeah. The uh you don't see a lot of animals sort of around. Most of the most of the farm animals are penned up, but uh these guys look magnificent. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna sit down here, have a, uh, have a little bit of a drink, oh, and a little bit of a rest, and try and decide where we're gonna go from here, whether we're gonna keep trudging up the road. There is a resort a couple of kilometers up the road. We might keep going up to there, see what's in there, and, uh, and maybe get a Didi back home because I'm not walking all that way again. Oh, it is exceptionally hot out here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna keep trudging along. So we'll get up to this resort. Hopefully there's something there for us to show you. And uh, we'll see how we go. So, we haven't managed to make it to the park we were going to look at, but we uh, have come across this little tourist area we're going to go and have a squiz in. So, we've got a list here of things that are here. Uh, we won't go through everything, but just give you a brief outline. So, introduction to Patriarch's Hometown Tourist Resort. Uh, opened in 1984. It was a 3A tourist attraction, it became a 4A in 2009. I don't know what 3A and 4A mean, 
Uh, it's home to 10 hot springs hotels, right here. Right, oh, Luxi Fung Din. It's reconstructed natural features of Heelong Mountain. Okay, we've got Chan Yuan Lake, covers 19,000 square meters and was reconstructed from the Lotus Pond in Guowen Temple. Long Tan Hu Wetland Park, 87,000 square meters. Completed in 2018. Uh, Groen Temple, which has a 1300 year history. Uh, Sutra Tower of Patriarch, Introduction. Okay, we've got all that stuff. This is sort of the area here. So we're going to go for a little walk in here, have a look at what we can see as we wander around. We're going to. Uh, Actually, we just have a look at this little square here. Which we have water running down through, down into the uh, main sort of river area. We have another little waterfall there. Looks like we can actually walk across there, but we're not going to do that. We're going to cross the road over the other side here, get ourselves into the shade, out of the sun a little bit, and. Uh, Go and have a look, see what we can find in here. We have to uh, try and find out just how far we've walked here today. So, uh, it's a long way. So I can see a bit of a temple sticking up out the top of the trees there, which we'll have a look at as we get closer. So I'm not sure if we're having to pay to get in here. We might have to uh, stop filming for just a minute. If we do have to pay, we'll have to see what's going on. Let's look around to our right parking area over there. Around to our left, we can see, looks like a bit of a square around here. Hello. And we're gonna go have a look around this way. Have a look around the corner, okay. So we have, looks like a bit of a hotel area in here. So we're going to move around this way to our right. And go and see what the go is around here as we move around. And we've got a big gate over here. Okay, we've got quite a bit of signage over there. So we'll go and have a look and see exactly what we're looking at. As we look through this bushes here, See a big square area, well, circular. It's got a lot of sculptures up on the uh, up on the far side there. Let's zoom in a little bit, you a little bit closer on them. So it's just more of this amazing stone sculpture that they do here, everywhere you look. Okay, we are going to go. Which way? Uh, right, we're going to duck over here first. We'll go have a look at this sign, see what it's telling us, if it's giving us some idea of direction we want to travel. Uh, she is very, very hot out here. Okay, let's try and get over this road without getting run down. And we're gonna see what this sign is telling us here about this area. Okay, so over to the right, we have hotel, 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 local product street. That might be interesting to have a look at. Hotel, hotel. To the left we have two temples, okay, and on the right hand side, Hot Spring Hotel, Hotel, Green Villa, Samara Resort, okay, so, uh, okay, so this must be the local products street just here, so most of what we want to see is over on our left to start with, so we're going to cross back over the road here, we'll just show you in this, in this parking area, 
So this is what I saw uh, having to pay. I wasn't sure if it was you have to pay to get into the park area, but uh, no, it's just the hotel. Uh, not the hotel, the parking. So in the middle of the uh, parking area, we have this amazing looking statue here. Uh, does have writing on the side, but it looks Chinese. So what we'll do is we'll duck in here We'll go have a look at these temples and we might come back via there and get a bit closer and have a look at what sort of writing we have on top of there. So here we have this beautiful gate. I love these gates that you see going into places, whether it's uh, into a big resort like this or just into a little uh, village area where they put a little gate over the, over the roadway. Right, we're going to get over the other side of the road here try and catch a bit of shade get out of this sun we are going to have to cross over again in a minute to get up to the temple i can see but just before we go there we have a look over on the right here So here we have a couple of hotels in the back and then this beautiful lake in the central area. Nice little covered area for sitting there, sitting in the shade. But we're not going to sit, we're going to keep walking. I'm a bit worried if I sit down now, I might not get up again. So let's keep on keeping on, shall we? Okay. So, can we see which way are the crowd's going? Okay, we've got a gate here, so I'm going to guess we need to somehow go through this gate. I don't know if we need a ticket or something here. Just, just have a look at what these people do, whether they do show a ticket as they go through. Now it looks like we're straight through, so we're going to duck through here, go and have a squeeze at what we can see up here. So we duck through, left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, so let's see if we can find out which temple this is, if we can find anything. These gates up here, absolutely beautiful. The artwork up on the top of that central one is gorgeous. So we're going to head up the steps here, see what we can see. Oh, actually, over here on the right, we have a bit of English. Okay, so this is a Guo, Guo En Temple. Uh, let's see what we have to say about this one. Originally named as Bao En Temple, was built in 683 AD, marked the beginning of the reign of Emperor Tang. Gaojong, which is a worship place for Master Hunin, the founder of Zen Buddhism, and where the Sutra of Master Hunin was edited in 205. Okay, known as the first temple of Zen Buddhism in South Lingnan area. Okay. Let's go have a look up in here and see what we can see. We have these trees out the front which are almost like giant bonsai trees there. They look amazing. Another one over on the right here. <laughs> look like giant bonsai but they're way too big to be that. Okay. So as we come in, you see all these red 
Uh, notice it's hanging off of the trees here. So as I've said before, these are all done for good luck, especially around Chinese New Year time. Then, in the center here we have this sort of golden temple kind of statue, which is gorgeous. So you can see, these uh, good luck notices are, there's thousands of them now all over the tree. Absolutely amazing. Okay, as we walk into this next building here, oh, we can see these giant scrolls. here so I can spin these around and see all that's written on them but I can't read them so I'm not going to bother too much so if we move around here look at our left have these worship places and then similarly over on the other side this artwork up on there up on the walls as well, which is really nice. Okay. Let's carry on our way. Uh, which way are we gonna go? Right, well. Okay, here we go, we got more signs in English. Okay, we have the grave of Master Huaneng's parents. The first ground memorial archway hall. Of my okay, we don't think we need to worry about a grave, but we'll go head up this way. So as we look on our left, see these frog statues. A uh, frog. And if we zoom in a bit closer, you can see there's turtles climbing over the backs of them. So there's a lot of turtles in here. We also have some some geese hanging out down here. Oh, and if we look down in the water here. Okay, so these people have got some food. So there's turtles coming up and fish coming up looking for food. That's cool. And then if we look over the other side here, we have more of the same, lots of fish. Can't see any turtles in this one, it looks like all fish, so. All right, let's carry on up the way and see what we can see. Uh, let's just get a bit closer here to these turtles, see. That's so cool, I do love, I do love things like that. Okay, let's carry on and see what else we can see in here. Okay, up here we have, oh this must be the lotus pond. So we have more turtles swimming down in the, in the water here, lotus plants. Okay, we're going to carry on up the stairs. Okay, first Grand Memorial Archway, money burning spot, incense buying spot, vulture peak, and toilet. 
Okay. I'm gonna head over this way. Let's have a look at this. Another big giant sculpture. Which is absolutely gorgeous. And here we have the temple up above. I'm not sure how close we can get to that, but we'll go have a look. Okay, we're going to go head into this this bit of a worship temple here now. I might have to stop filming for a minute and just see if filming is allowed. Some of these worship places I don't like filming happening in, so we will uh, respect their beliefs and customs. So. Gro and Temple was located at one of the mountain peaks due to its special location. It was called the First Ground. Memorial Archway was constructed in 1618 during the Ming Dynasty. Several dragon shapes inlaid. All the dragons were made of ancient porcelain in the Ming Dynasty with an exquisite and complicated workmanship which is a treasure of Chinese culture. The archway stands towards the south, forming a door of yang which means the door opens to the sun. There's a couple on two sides of the archway. The first line when taking a step into it, you know the mountain is the best. And the second line, when entering the door, you feel the ground is unique. So up here we have incense burning spot. And then we see the lions guarding the gate. This is the temple. Okay, we're going to turn the camera off for a minute because I don't know what the go is. When we get inside, if I see other people taking photos, we'll... Uh, get some more video but we'll see how we go okay so on the back side of the temple wall we have these old old writings which I can't tell you how old these are but then we'll sneak a little peek inside the door here and then over this side we have these turtles the scrolls on their backs here again can't tell you how old they are but they do look absolutely splendid okay we're gonna carry on up the steps Let's see what else we've got up here Okay, so I have a lot of shrines in here, but they don't really want us to film there, so we're going to uh, skip a lot of these. We'll try and get up to this temple up the top or the tower. See what we can see. Again, no English, so I can't tell you what they're saying. Ah, oh, it's 
so here we are. This tower. See these bells hanging off the side. We can hear them ringing in the wind. <sighs> Buddha, Lachi Garden, Bowen Tower. So that's the Tower of Gratitude and the Hall of Universal Understanding. Yeah. Wow. So as we have a little look in here, it's is just beautiful. Wow. That roof. Okay. We're going to move around to our right here. Have a look up at this tower. It's nice and tall. We have these carvings on the side, so I wonder if this is the guy that this whole area is sort of devoted to. Oh, so we do have a little little worship temple in there. There are steps in there to go up, but we're not going to do that because I've walked. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. There are four types of gratitude in Buddhism, namely parents, nation, living species on earth, and three treasures, or Triratna, Buddha, Dharma, and Aisha, Sangha. In order to hide Shariputra, Buddha's relics, disciples of Master Hui Neng built the tower in 712 AD during the Tang Dynasty. Through the history, the tower was fallen, renovated, and relocated. Now the tower stands actually on the southeast of its original site. The tower is 28.88 meters high, having seven floors and in the shape of an octangle. The tower body was craved sure that's meant to say carved with several images of of master buddha of zen buddhism and there are white marble buddhas on each floor so if we get a step away a little bit and we'll turn around and try and get a better shot here of the of the tower so there we can see with that beautiful blue sky behind us it's absolutely gorgeous very very nice okay we are going to carry on this way now head up through this gate and see what else we've got to see okay so Buddha Lights your garden Long Tan Wetland Park Long Tan Temple okay so we've got a wetland park up here that'll be nice to see Oh, wetland, water, bit of cool breeze, please. So we're in a nice shaded area, lots of trees up here. And so I'm guessing the wetland park is over on the other side of this uh, little parking area. We'll go and see what we can see. Okay, we've got another sign talking to us there, but we'll come back and have a look at that in a minute. So, as we look, how do we get down to this path? Oh, maybe down this way. Okay, so... As we get down to this wall, just move over to the left a little bit to uh, get ourselves into the shade. And then we can see down here lots of little lakes. We have the mountains going right up in the background. Lots of little lakes, a little road down the back, and lots of grassed area around the edge. Let's see if we can get around this way a little bit more, see further around. But that does look looks very very nice okay we're not going to get much further to get much more of a look than what we can see here but uh 
and just see there's uh, walkways and stuff right the way around the edge of the lake. It looks very, very pleasant. So, okay, we're going to now head back, have a look at what this other sign back here said. It did have another English language. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, how do you do? Um, hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, going up to this one here, we have a bit of a garden in here, and let's see what this, uh, okay, lychee tree planted by Master Huineng. The tree, also named the tree of Buddha, was planted by Master Huineng in his late life. Once becoming withered and after living for 1300 years, the tree magically started growing new leaves several decades ago. Since then, it has bloomed and borne fruit almost every year. The fruits are sweet and tasty with tiny cores inside. The lychee tree symbolizes Master Huang's culture as an important part of Chinese traditional culture. It's full of lives through history, al albeit vicissitudes. So this is a tree. We see it's being propped up to keep it growing. So, 1300 year old tree. Absolutely amazing. Now, on the other side of the gates here, we have these amazing gateposts with this just amazing artwork in it. I do love the stuff they do here, it's just mind blowing. Here we go. Absolutely stunning. Okay, so here we have a depiction of a guy picking lychee fruit. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's carry on around this way. See what else we can find in our tour. Okay. Okay, that takes us down to the wetland park. Long Tan Temple is still this way somewhere. So we're going to go see if we can find that on our way around. And I think that will be the last place we need to we need to see in here. So if you ever find yourself in China and around the Yunfu area, this is definitely a must-see place. It is absolutely stunning, full of so many sort of uh, worship rooms, different temples around the place. Uh, just so much to see and all of it's so old, so much history. And we really, we really don't have anything like it in Australia, you know. We've okay, so that leads us down to the lake. We're not going to do that because that's a lot of steps down there. Uh, so yeah, like the history in Australia that we sort of, well, we were taught when I was young just has nothing compared to what we have here. You know, really to get that sort of stuff, you have to get away from the sort of European history in, of Australia and really look at the Aboriginal history in more, much more deeply. So, I'm not sure where we are here now. Uh, okay. That's all work area up there, so I think we're going to head back this way. I don't know, maybe we can't find the Long Tan Temple. Uh, yeah, the history here is just stunning. The uh, traditional architecture, the traditional culture stuff is amazing to check out it's amazing to learn about i uh i wish we had some uh let's just go down and have a look from here down at the wetlands yeah you can't really see much until you get down and I'm, i don't have the energy to climb down all them steps so we're going to carry on back this way so this is our 
I think we've pretty much shown you everything so I hope you've enjoyed having a look around here as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you uh, so we have one more video left to film here in Yunfu and that will be the fireworks show tomorrow night for the uh, oh what was the name of the company I've forgotten the name of the company off the top of my head but uh, yeah, so we got that tomorrow night, we'll be filming and then uh, heading back home to Jiaoqing on Wednesday. Getting back to my own home and I have a lot of other videos, so we're on uh, still on school holidays for another, for another m month, six weeks. So we are, uh, uh, yeah, we're just going to be busy. Busy, busy filming. We're going to try and get as many videos up around Jiaqing as we can prior to going back to work when things are going to have to slow down a little bit. So, yeah, if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you've enjoyed the video, like it, comment. If you have questions, if you have anything you'd like to see in the future or any questions about life here, uh, or the culture or anything else hit up hit up in the comments ask questions you have ideas for videos let me know and we'll uh, endeavor to make whatever we can we can find to uh, give you some more information of this beautiful beautiful place uh, like comment subscribe oh and share uh, yeah, share the video around. Try and get more people to uh, see what's going on here. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care, stay safe.